Well, hello there, and welcome back to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kira Mack, as always, and delighted and excited that you've been able to tune in with us today for today's show. Now, before we do get into it, don't forget to hit an old like there if you're enjoying the video, subscribe to the channel, and also if you can share us on social media, that will always be of great help to the show. Also, we're available on a multitude of podcast players now. So link down below in the description and you can see where it's available. And finally, if you do want to support the show, if you get some kind of value out of the show, you can always uh, make a donation to the Buy Me A Coffee uh, link, which is also down below in the description. But getting into today's show, we have four stories that we're going to bring to you. And the first one is in relation to China backs the grey business crackdown. The Chinese embassy in Bangkok said it will support the Thai government's effort to deal with Chinese citizens who are involved in illegal activities here in the kingdom. China has always required its citizens and companies to strictly abide by the laws and customs of the countries where they reside and actively give back to local communities, said the embassy. It's pretty interesting, considering some of the things I've read recently about some of these very strange offices that have opened up in other cities where they're trying to track down their own citizens. So, hmm. The law. We support the Thai side in dealing with the suspected illegal activities of some individual Chinese citizens in Thailand in accordance with the law, it said. The law enforcement agencies of China and Thailand have cooperated closely in combating cross border crimes such as online gambling and fraud. It should be made clear that these suspected illegal acts are only committed by a small number of individuals and by no means represent all Chinese citizens and enterprises in Thailand. The police and interior ministry have been cracking down on illegal associations that are suspected to be the fronts for illicit Chinese businesses nationwide after a whistleblower brought them to the public's attention. Former massage parlor tycoon and politician Chuvit Kamasavisit has been urging the police to take action against Chinese gangs and illegal associations in the country, supplying investigators with evidence to back his claims. One of the first major grey business operations exposed Mr. Chuvit was said to be headed by Chinese Chayanat Tuho Kornchananat, a Chinese national who also holds Thai citizenship. Mr. Chayanat has been in custody since November 23rd when he turned himself over to Deputy National Police Chief General Surachat Hakparn. He was wanted for colluding in the illicit drug trade and illegally possessing a psychotropic substance with the intent to sell. Meanwhile, Mr. Chuvit yesterday appeared at the Metropolitan Police Bureau after learning Santana Pananarat, an ex-policeman, was about to petition the MPD police chief to speed up investigations into drug abuse and other violations at Mr. Chuvit's hotel. A confrontation broke out when they met. Earlier, they had a war of words inside Mr. Chuvit's hotel and Tonglor police station. Bit of an old strange story. Um, it's been well known at this stage that there's been quite a lot of illegal Chinese activities going on here in Thailand that have pretty much been given the green light, in my opinion, by some people here. It, it's hard to believe that all these businesses and this illegal activity could be getting could be getting away with things and be doing what they're doing without help from somebody up above. So I think that is the bottom line. We've seen already that immigration officers in relation to illegal visas being given to Chinese have been arrested and are being dealt with. So yes, this is, I mean, I think ingrained into the Thai governmental system at the moment and it, and it needs to be rooted out. Now there's uh, this guy, he's a, a massage, former massage parlor tycoon and he's also a politician, uh, Mr. Chuvit. He basically has been I mean, just dishing the dirt for months on all these guys and then including the Thai police and government. And he seems to have, have a treasure trove of documents and evidence pointed to all kinds of corruption within this country. Uh, it's it's hard to believe he's been able to continue for so long without somebody paying him a visit. But uh, yeah, he's kept going and uh, he seems to be immune from pretty much anything. But Nevertheless, that is the story in relation to that. And we're going to move on and keeping on the theme of Chinese higher airfares hobble the Chinese market revival. The average airfare for flights connecting key cities in China and Thailand remains 1.5 times higher than pre-pandemic levels. While for second tier cities, fares have surged 200%, which means low price tours cannot return, according to the Tourism Authority of Thailand. The TAT governor, Yutasak Supasorn, said even though average airfares have decreased from last year, prices for March and April for Chinese cities are still higher than before the pandemic. 
He said flights bound for key cities in the mainland are 1.5 times higher, such as 17 to 24,500 baht for Shanghai and 20 to 24,000 baht for Chengdu and 14 to 15,000 baht for Guangzhou. Ticket prices for March and April have doubled for secondary cities without direct flights as the reopening only began this year, said Mr. Yutasak, with the flow of passengers still weak in the first two months. In February, the number of seats from eastern China, such as Shanghai, uh, Jingzhen, uh, Hebei, tallied 17,308 per week with more than 10 airlines operating flights to Bangkok, Phuket and Chiang Mai. Of that number, Shanghai secured the largest capacity at 10,000 seats. The average spending per Chinese traveller increased as the more expensive travel costs prompted them to consider longer stays of 5 to 10 days, according to the Dragon Trail research. They prefer to travel with a small group of family members or friends and seek new experiences rather than use group tours. The average spending per person soared to 60 to 150,000 baht per trip. Now that's a huge gap, isn't it? Increasing from an average of 50 to 54,000 prior to the pandemic, according to Dragon Trail Research. Mr. Yutasek said it'll be difficult for tour operators to offer lower cost tours because of the operating costs, as Chinese tourists' preference have shifted from mass tours to individual trips or tailor-made tours. Low-cost tours might prove unpopular, he said. Mr. Yutasak said that this structure of post-pandemic Chinese travel will see individual trips dominate the market, outpacing mass tour groups, which have yet to resume. The Tourism Authority of Thailand last week held a roadshow in three cities, Shanghai, Chengdu and Guangzhou. The agency expects to generate at least 900 million baht from businesses matching between 61 tourism operators from Thailand and 302 travel agents in China. I mean, this isn't really a strange phenomenon. The airfares have increased. I mean, it was pretty much the same when Europe started to fly back to Thailand. There wasn't a huge amount of flights, which obviously then, if there was some kind of demand, pushed up the flight prices. Airlines weren't in too much of a hurry to either to, you know, increase the amount of flights as well because they were getting this higher airfare anyway. And still, even at that, the price of flights to Thailand from Europe have are still considerably a lot higher than before the pandemic. So the idea that they thought the prices would be remain the same is a little naive in my opinion. It's obviously that the Tourism Authority of Thailand have not really been doing as much research as they should be in relation to this. Chinese were allowed to start traveling as of January 8. We're all now, now it's March 4th. So it's been two months, but I mean, people weren't ready. There's a, a bit of a backlog I, I read in in, pre, in, in getting your passport because a lot of passports had expired and they weren't issuing new ones so people couldn't fly from China and yeah I, I'm, I'm not sure what they were expecting the, the amount of Chinese flights are not that high compared to before pandemic so I mean the prices are going to increase and they're going to be that way for quite a while I reckon the only way things will possibly get better is when more airlines see more bookings and they feel confident in adding more flights to it and that will hopefully drive down the prices for Chinese citizens who wish to you know have a holiday here in Thailand the low budget tours I'm not the biggest fan of them I think they they have a place in the um, Thai tourism industry, but they do tend to take over tourist destinations. And I think that's not a good idea. And it turns a lot of other people off from going to that destination. But nevertheless, I think the Chinese market's going to be slow. I think I've been reading that Patia also doesn't see anything happening until the end of this year with Chinese. So it, it's going to be a long road. I mean, they were really looking at getting this Chinese market. And this was going to be like the real boost to the economy tourism industry but it looks like they haven't done the research and it looks like we're not going to see the real surge that they thought would be coming now another story that we're looking at and uh, this one is coming out of the phuket news it's an interesting one i saw it in the bangkok post as well Seven thousand six hundred russians seek to extend their phuket stay nearly seven thousand six hundred russian nationals have sought to extend the length of their stay in phuket according to the local immigration chief Phuket is a nice place to visit with delicious food and good weather. As word has spread about the island, Russian tourists keep coming to the province. That was according to per- Police Colonel Tanet Sokchai. He's the superintendent of the Phuket Immigration Office. Many obtain visas to stay in the island for three months or not more than 90 days. There are also Russian business operators holding business visas. Russian nationals stay mostly in Rawai and Shillong. Currently, a total of 7,596 Russian nationals are seeking to extend the length of their stay in Phuket, mostly in Muang district, followed by Talang and Katu, said uh, Colonel Tanet. 
data on total arrivals showed an average of 300,000 foreign visitors entered the island a month or 10,000 per day. And the number continues to rise as tourism recovers after three lean pandemic years. Now, Russia accounts for the most visitors by nationality, followed by India, Kazakhstan, England and Australia. Colonel Tanet said a total of 31,128 foreign nationals are seeking to extend their stay on the island. With the rise of the number of foreign tourists on the island, immigration police have launched a so-called white accommodation project featuring crime and drug-free accommodation to ensure the safety of foreign nationals and local residents, he said. Tanet Ongcharan, vice president of the Phuket Tourist Association, said most Russian visitors stay in hotels. Some rent houses, with the owners reporting their stay to immigration officers as required by law. And it's quite an interesting story. I, it's a lot of people that were looking to extend their visas by thirty by after being here for three months. So what is the procedure to do so? So apparently it's basically you turn up with a um, application form and a fee and you can apply and they will say yes or no, basically. Now, I think if you've stayed here for 90 days on a tourist visa, and you want to extend your stay, I think you can do it by another 30 days. I think that's it, right? Another 30. I could be wrong, guys. So it's 1,900 baht, and I think you can extend it by another 30 days. If you want to extend it further, you want to get another visa, you have to go out of the country. But if you're planning to extend for another 30 days, I guess the thing that I would think in my head would be, what is the reason behind that? Do you not have a job to go back to? Do you have the financial resources to stay here for another month? What are you actually doing on the island? And if there's so many people wanting to stay so long, these are the questions I think immigration should be asking. I think they should be asking them of any nationality, by the way. If you've come here in a tourist visa and you're wishing to extend for another month to make it four months, then I think there should be questions asked. And supplying bank statements proof that what you're doing on the island here is tourism because we do all know that many people abuse tourist visas so they can continue to work illegally on the island now there's one thing when we talk about digital nomads and what they do um, and i'm not sure that really harms anybody as such because most of that money at the end of the day is made abroad but They've already spoken about the number of Russian illegal businesses taking place here in the island, the amount of illegal Russians being employed. We've brought you that story. The link will be up in the description right right now or up on the page. Click on it after the show. You can go watch that video where we spoke about the Russian mafia uh, basically taking over large part businesses here in on the island. So if that is a known thing, then you need to scrutinize who's staying here longer from specific nations. If you put out a story and which the Phuket immigration did. They spoke about the illegal ma- uh, Russian mafia you basically running businesses like taxi companies, running businesses that were illegal to be done, could only be done by Thai citizens, knowing that they've been using nominees for businesses with not a single Thai person employed in it. And they know this for a fact. Then you need to scrutinize the nationality that seem to be abusing the situation in terms of extension of tourist visas. Why? What are you doing here? Proof etc etc where is your money coming all that kind of stuff should be looked at i'm not saying that everybody who's from a specific country say for russia for example are here doing some some are here legitimately on holiday but not everybody can afford to just stay another month after you know being here for 90 days i do think these things need to be looked at but again i'll put it out to you guys what do you think about it do you think that nationality if you're going to start staying longer than your visa you know trying to get another extension for another 30 days that you have to prove that you're a legitimate tourist. I mean, I remember a few years ago, Phuket Immigration were doing a huge clampdown on this kind of stuff. Now, look, guys, I live in Phuket. The law here, it, it, it's 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 like the Wild West at times. We brought you that story, by the way, and I, I want to go back to that story that we brought to two days ago about the red and yellow card nonsense. I mean, when you think about it, and it's something that really has been bothering me because it just shows how little disregard Phuket has for foreigners. Because when I say that, This rule that they were bringing in about the red and yellow card, and if you don't know about that, go back and look through my channel and you'll see the story about that was the last video. That story is just really ingrained in my mind how little and what they think. I mean, Thai people can break the law. Every traffic offence under the sun, nothing happens to them. If a foreigner does, you won't be able to get back into the country. But furthermore, what what Phuket is doing, right, is going to drive people to other parts of the country and not bother come to Phuket anymore. Because this rule, by the way, is only for Phuket. You can fly into Bangkok. 
The rule doesn't exist. As I said, Phuket were making their own rules up. And I, what I think is going to happen is we'll never hear about it again because I, I'm pretty sure somebody higher up than this guy said, are you okay? You don't get to make your own rules up. And we have immigration law here in, in the country. And I actually think anybody who got refused coming in would probably have a good grounds for appeal, which you can do if you refuse because it's not in immigration law. But anyway, that's about that story. It's been on my mind the last couple of days. Yesterday, or the two days ago, that video, we got 120 odd comments about it. And the majority of people were just disgusted that they even brought this idea up, but yet came up at a press conference and told the whole world. So yeah, it certainly was a hot topic. But anyway, that's the story about the amount of Russians currently trying to extend or stay here in the country. I'd love to know what you think about it, as I said before. Comments down below in that comment section, as always. And the final story of today, and, and there's an update to this story, and I'll get back to you in a minute. Ozzy arrested after running amok in car stolen from airport. An Australian man has been arrested after he stole a car at the car park at Phuket International Airport. By the way, this guy deserves the red card, jail, and then deported. Hit a parked car and then left the scene and ran two police checkpoints before he was apprehended late yesterday afternoon. Lieutenant Colonel Bandasak of the Saku Police revealed details of the arrest this afternoon. Saku Police were informed by a Thai man at about 5.50pm that his white Toyota Yaris had been stolen from the airport car park by a foreign man. The foreigner hit a parked car at the car park and drove off, police were told. The officers started tracking the stolen car through its GPS. Officers from the Shillong police station set up a checkpoint at Chaffa East Road. However, the foreign man, later identified as 56-year-old Australian national John Joseph Donnelly, drove past the officers at a high speed with traffic police giving chase by motorbike. Donnelly next encountered another police checkpoint set up in front of Lotus Rawai on Visit Road. Donnelly again tried to avoid the checkpoint, but struck a motorbike being driven by a Russian man, Philip Vorostov, 35. Mr. Vorostov was knocked off uh, the motorbike, but did not suffer any serious injuries. And I will come back to that. This story is actually in, is wrong, um, and, and I'll, I'll update you on this. Uh, however, the motorbike went under the front of the car, causing the front tire to blow out. Donnelly attempted to keep driving, but eventually had to stop near Friendship Beach because of the damage to the front left wheel. Donnelly then attempted to flee on foot. Police gave chase and soon had him in custody. Donnelly was first taken to Shillong Police Station, then taken to Saku Police Station, where he was presented with a slew of charges, including auto theft, reckless driving, damaged private property. Donnelly denied all charges against him. He had it. Unbelievable. Donnelly already had a criminal record for theft committed on Phuket Town. This guy now is maybe one of the ones that should be deported. Donnelly also is known to be uh, on medication for a mental disorder. And uh, just to update you on this, uh, about the, the Russian gentleman who was hit on his motorbike. Actually, he's in urgent need that, that the story was wrong originally. So Mr. Vorostov, he suffered serious injuries to one of his legs. He was rushed to Vashira Hospital in Phuket Town. As of yesterday, urgent blood donations are still needed for him. People with O or B blood were, are being asked to present themselves at the blood bank at Vashira Hospital to donate blood and explain uh, what they were in the donate blood. For, uh, they explained that they were giving the blood for this Russian gentleman who was hit by uh, this lunatic in a car. Now, we talk about the red and yellow card and how blah, blah. But you know what? In times like this, where I see a guy that clearly committed crimes in Phuket already... I'm wondering what he's still doing in the island. And see, this is the, the kind of thing that makes me wonder exactly what goes on here in Phuket. If he's already been arrested for something else and the police know that this guy has mental disorders, should he be in Thailand? I mean, you're obviously, you're allowed. Any country is allowed to refuse entry to certain people if they feel they're not mentally fit to enter the country or they pose a threat to the country or they've committed crimes within the country. So why is this guy roaming around Phuket? It's one thing to say, well, a guy breaks a red light. Oh, give him a yellow card. He can't come back in the next time because he's a foreigner. How does a guy who's committed multiple crimes and is known to be have mental issues be allowed to continue to stay? So there needs to be a balance in the law. This guy, in my opinion, he has mental issues, yes, but it doesn't abscond him from the fact of what he's done. He's injured a man on a motorbike who was minding his own business driving around. He's ran multiple uh, checkpoints. He's stolen somebody's car. And to be honest, he needs to do jail time and then he needs to be deported back to Australia. And that's the bottom line in it all. And guys, that's it for today. Thank you as always for tuning in. Hope you like this top four stories that we found for you today. We'll be back in the next 
day or two. Once again, have a great day, stay safe out there, and thanks again. But ultimately, with this story or anything else that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Because yes, this is a new show, but it's also a conversation. Now keep that conversation going. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and do all the good stuff that does help that YouTube algorithm. But ultimately, my name is Kieran Mack. You've been listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show, and we will see you next time.